We do turn now to a story breaking overnight. Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg claims he was pressured by the White House to censor content related to COVID-19 during the pandemic. Aaron Katursky joins us now with details. Aaron, good morning. Good morning to you. Wit, for years, critics have taken aim at Facebook for silencing views that challenge the general consensus in the medical community, especially about the origin of COVID-19. Now Facebook's founder surprisingly says they're right. Overnight, the White House responded to Zuckerberg's letter. Our position has been clear and consistent. We believe tech companies and other private actors should take into account the effects their actions have on the American people while making independent choices about the information they present. Zuckerberg going on to express regret for demoting content related to corruption allegations against Hunter Biden ahead of the 2020 election, alleging the FBI warned information circulating online was a Russian disinformation operation. It's since been made clear that the reporting was not Russian and disinformation, and in retrospect, we shouldn't have demoted the story. Zuckerberg went on to say the company has changed its policies and processes to make sure it doesn't happen again. House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jim Jordan celebrating the letter called... I think the funniest thing was that that happened under the Trump administration, the Hunter Biden sh That's number one. Number two, in terms of, like, COVID restrictions, Facebook literally was too late to the game in terms of, like, limiting COVID misinformation, and even then didn't do a good job with limiting COVID misinformation. The reason why Zuck is doing this is because, I told you this, he, alongside many other tech weirdos in Silicon Valley are going hyper right wing. They were already right wing. They're just even more right wing now. They were right wing of the libertarian flavor. Now they're right wing of the conservative, like regular old conservative flavor. And they'll lean into the culture war shit too. Great stuff. Calling it a big win for free speech. Zuckerberg's letter first appeared in the Wall Street Journal. And with there really is a tension going on here between the government and big tech over how content on social media should be policed and whether conservative voices often get silenced. Absolutely. This story getting a lot of attention this morning. Aaron, thank you. Facebook literally helped facilitate an ethnic cleansing campaign in Myanmar. That's number one. Facebook literally is insanely censorious when it comes to pro-Palestinian voices. That's number two. Meta has also hired a former Project 2025 staffer and Ron DeSantis, the chief of staff, is the director of policy, public policy in the South. This coincides with the decline in moderation of anti LGBTQ hate on Meta while limiting the reach of LGBTQ accounts. He has since deactivated his LinkedIn. It doesn't end there though. I've been at this game for quite a while. Many people don't remember, but back in the day before I started serving three minute ad breaks at the top of the hour, I used to be a Facebook content creator for the Young Turks. And even back then, conservatives would constantly chirp about Facebook censorship. But even back then, when conservatives kept crying, yeah, in my woke bay years about Facebook censorship, they literally would work with the American Enterprise Institute. They had consultants from right right-wing think tanks, even back then, that were playing an active role in Facebook moderation. Yeah, Columbia SJP literally got banned on Instagram. Best clip from Facebook. <laughs> Thank you, Piney Tinas. Take a week off. How is the censorship if it's just enforcement of anti-hate policies? Wait, what? What? No. Republicans used to complain about, like, straight-up Nazis being censored on Facebook all the time at a time when Facebook literally was working alongside Republicans in its moderation and absolutely was not doing that at a time when like Ben Shapiro was like the number one Facebook content creator on the news front. They still won't admit what we all this know. This is where the White Dushi. House responds to Mark Zuckerberg's letter in which the Meta CEO says the platform censored COVID content after caving to pressure from the Biden-Harris administration. Senior White House correspondent Peter Ducey joined us live from the White House. Hey, Peter. Good morning, and the reason that we know about this letter that Mark Zuckerberg sent to Jim Jordan is because Jim Jordan posted it. So about COVID censorship, Mark Zuckerberg writes, in 2021, senior officials of the Biden administration, including those from the White House, repeatedly pressured our teams for months to censor certain COVID-19 related content, including humor and satire, and expressed significant frustration when we did not meet their demands. I believe the government pressure was wrong, and I regret that we were not more outspoken about it. On that point, a few minutes ago, a White House official told us, when confronted with a deadly pandemic, this administration encouraged responsible actions to protect public health and safety. Our position has been clear and consistent. We believe tech companies and other private actors should take into account the effects their actions have on the American people while making independent choices about the information they present. And that's not all. Zuckerberg is also writing about Hunter Biden censorship. He says, when we saw a New York Post story reporting on corruption allegations include, uh, involving then-Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden's family, 
We sent that story to fact checkers for review and temporarily demoted it while we were waiting for a reply. It's since been made clear that the reporting was not Russian disinformation and in retrospect, we should not have demoted the story. I asked President Biden about this at the time. His team was apparently trying to censor this Hunter content. Do you still think that the stories from the fall about your son Hunter were Russian disinformation and smear campaign, like you said? Yes, yes, yes. God love you, man. You, you're a one horse pony. One and we've bone. still never heard anybody from the White House come out to admit what we all now know, that it was not Russian disinformation, despite what President Biden said there at the end of 2020 and what his team told us uh, once they took office in 2021. Back to you. Hey, hey, Mr. One Horse Pony. Um, <laughs> Just reminding us yeah. of those sound bites. So, so even, I think, over a year in office, you asked Jen Psaki about the same thing, and they stuck to their guns. They said, absolutely, it was Russian disinformation. So that was apparently just their line? Yes, and they continued to treat that letter that was signed by a couple dozen former intel agents mm -hmm. who uh, were talking about their opinions of Rus Russian disinformation. That remains the gospel here. And again, we, we know that this is not Russian disinformation, yeah. uh, but we've never actually heard anybody correct that the way that Mark Zuckerberg did with this letter. All right. Uh, thanks so much, Peter. Here's the, other, up. Yeah, here's the other thing. Uh, it affected the debate. Thanks, Dad. Yeah, because they would, he was going to go down and say, what are you doing with this, uh, the, your, the Biden family doing with these investments? And he, they stopped it. He goes, well, that laptop, yeah. 51 intel agents. And knowing that Joe Biden looked at the camera and knew it was his son's laptop, that just fundamentally, 100%. you know, that if someone's that comfortable lying to 50 million people, what makes you think he stopped when he got the job? It affected the election, too. Remember the poll that Absolutely. people were asked if you knew about the laptop story, which was not being reported on any other which network? Which is crazy. Dude, this which didn't was work. Biden, and a lot of people said no. This didn't work. Why are they still chirping about this? Like, nothing. This did not work. I was just like, oh, my God. This was another, like, Republican-born hysteria in the 2016-2020 era, <laughs> okay? And, yes, right-wing influencers were dominating the entire time, and they still have. And that's why Facebook is just like lost territory the idea that zuckerberg is not doing enough moderation on facebook is a laughable notion or i mean doing too much moderation is a laughable notion bros literally believe artificial intelligence over there facebook is actively breaking the brains of all of your older relatives okay in terms of like the laptop story they didn't even actually uh, uh, stop or censor the laptop story. He's saying they paused the distribution of the story for like a couple days to make sure that they fact checked it and then they allowed it to be released. My mom just showed me an AI clip five minutes ago that she believed. I know it's really f up. Uh, and having said this, Facebook specifically in terms of censorship is so aggro. They go crazy mode censoring any and every public display, any kind of sentiment about pro-Palestinians, Palestinian emancipation. They literally banned students were just uh, justice in Palestine, the Columbia group yesterday. Here's an article from one month ago or a couple months ago. Meta expands hate speech policy to remove posts targeting Zionists. Facebook is literally worse than Twitter, dude, and has been for a while. We just don't talk about it because it's only old people that are on there. No, you, you would think that if anybody you know, Trump put the CEI, the FBI director there, mm -hmm. the CIA director there. He, he had his uh, director of national intelligence say, I don't know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. This laptop is real and no one listened to Radcliffe. I just wonder, what, what are we supposed to say to Zuckerberg like three and a half years later? Like, thank you? I mean, it just seems to me that every single story or <clears throat> major scandal, people, we, we have to report on when people are, are late. And we've been talking about this from the very beginning. We have reporters on to source this stuff. And we talked about the political pressure and the intel agencies having some uh, corruption in the higher echelon, not the rank and file people that are just trying to do the job. And he comes around three, year, three and a half years later saying, look, we got it all wrong, but the election is over now. So what are they going to do different in this election? Are they, right. are they hands off? Well, we, yeah, the last thing you would say is thank you to him because he said in this letter, and, and you can see it on foxnews.com, he said, look, the administration pressured us, but ultimately, ultimately it was our decision. We own that decision. So, you know, the FBI said, look out for disinformation. And 
Facebook is the one that screwed this up completely. And so why is he doing it now? Because the House Judiciary Committee is looking into it and they're talking about regulating his company. That is the last thing he wants. He doesn't want the government breathing down his throat because he wants to be able to make the decisions that led to these well, ill fated choices that they made back in. It's so funny that these guys are like literally shitting down his throat when he's like actively giving them freebies. The Hunter Biden laptop story was an idiotic narrative that didn't work because hunter biden is a fail son in 2020 he wants to be able to continue to make him Social. even though he should not have been able to do that he should have said look uh, we're not it's a jump ball here we're just going to throw that out well social media platforms they should not be able to compromise their standards because they're being pressured by an administration whether or not that's republicans but they're or, protected by Democrats. Section 520. Well, well um, at the time of COVID, Facebook publicly had a stated goal, and that was to push millions of people to get the COVID-19 vaccine. Why are they pushing that message? Agendas. Why don't they just allow Lawrence to comment on Facebook, Steve to comment on Anyone out there, it's a public forum to be able to comment, as long as it's not putting anyone in danger. Why be a lesser evil voter when you can con condemn both sides? Irresponsible. Because there are no both sides in genocide. There are victims of genocide, and they're perpetrators of the genocide. One is a state with nuclear arms and is killing a unimaginable amount of civilians. The other is a violent Islamist militant group that became increasingly more violent in its tactics as a direct consequence of the violence of the apartheid conducted by said militant militarized state with nuclear arms. There's no both sides to this. The Holocaust was a genocide, not a war. Wait, what? Dude, what are you talking about? Are you unfamiliar with the second World War the second? That is what was happening simultaneously. What a ridiculous statement. They are both genocides. The Holocaust was a genocide, and so is what Israel's doing to the Palestinians right now. <laughs> Now tell me social media is important after reading that shit. It is. See, he's agreeable. What is this? Uh, okay, I wasn't sure. Trust me, I'm very against the Israeli government. I think what's happening is disgusting. I do think that 10-7 was a violent act of war, but Israel has turned us into something completely different. Yeah, 10-7 had a litany of atrocious, a, a litany of atrocities that occurred. I still maintain that the standard of violence that uh, the, the victims within the in-group of the colony receive is still set by the colony itself. Itself. Exactly how Dana Fash will ask this question. Kamala, do you condemn the anti-Semitic hate monger protesters on college campuses or do you stand with the terrorists? Yeah, she is. Dana Fash is so fashy. She is a Omega, Omega Zionist. That is precisely how she is going to ask this question. And Kamala Harris is absolutely going to tank that. That's not even a, that's, I mean, that's a lock. How would I answer this qu idiotic question? I would say this is the United states of america that i'm seeking out the presidency of and as an american citizen i believe that these bold brave college campus protesters have every right to peacefully demonstrate against what they consider to be an unimaginable amount of violence now of course that's me saying that kamala harris would never be able to say that come on let's be real but like if i was asked about it i say it's called free speech you should look it up and also what's next like what what, what, what is the what's the what kind of silly argument is this that like that american students are not allowed to say are not allowed to call into question our allegiances with foreign governments as long as they're not breaking any laws i have no problem with it it's called free speech history will look fondly upon those uh who are on the right side of the issue and they will remember people like you dana fash as evil demons